this truck is presenting the H4E, a tracked mobile cone crusher with built on three deck after screen for three final products plus oversized recirculation. This machine is used in secondary or tertiary crushing in quarries and the maximum feed size is 185 millimeter. The maximum throughput depending on the settings is 208 tons per hour. The feed of the material to the hopper either can be done by a primary crusher directly to the hopper or by an excavator to the hopper. The rear feeding weight is uh, 3.45 meter and the feeding height is uh, 3.4 meter and if we open the rear wall, wall 2.7 meter. Also the feeding length on the sides is 3.8 meter. The hopper has a wear lining on the side walls and also on the rear wall made of hardness Brunel 450 of uh, 8 millimeter. In addition, optionally, side wall extensions are available to bring the feed capacity of the hopper from 8 cubic meter water level to 12 cubic meter water level. The extensions have a height of uh, 500 millimeter. From the hopper, the feed material is going by belt feeder to the cone crusher. The belt feeder has a width of 1.2 meter and a length of 5.4 meter and is driven hydraulically 7.5 kilowatt. Optionally, a separate pre-screen is available in this position for the H4E. This pre-screen scalps off the fine fraction before the material goes into the cone crusher. The fine fraction either can be stockpiled separately or is going in crusher bypass. And the, if we have the pre-screen, the hopper volume is reduced to 5 cubic meters. So the heart of the H4E for sure is the extra heavy duty cone crusher. Actually, it's not a cone crusher, it's a territory crusher. It means that we have a spider bearing on top and a bearing on bottom. So the movement of this machine is like this. If we would not have the spider bearing, the movement would be like this. And this gives much more load to the bearings at the bottom. The territory crusher can have seven different concave liners at the outside, depending on the size of the feed material. And it can have three different cone liners at the shaft. The shaft itself, where we have the cone liner, can be lifted and lowered. So we can adjust the closed side setting from six to 38 millimeter by the hydroset system. The hydroset system is a hydraulic cylinder below the shaft and it lifts and lowers uh, the shaft and adjusts the gap. Furthermore, this system is uh, in action when uncrushable material enters to the crusher. It drops immediately the shaft and the uncrushable material can pass without damaging the material. In, during operation, the level of the filling is controlled by two ultrasonic sensors. So when the level is going up too much, the feed of the material is reduced or even stopped. When the level is going down again, the feed of the material is continued. So we always have a constant feeling we call it chalk feed of the crusher. In addition, we have a spraying system on the sides to prevent dust going out of the machine. 
overpressurizing system gives filtered air, this is the air filter, and then we have a fan, and from the fan, the high pressure air is blown into the chamber of the cone crusher to make an overpressure and to avoid that the dust can enter into the cone crusher and damage the bearings. This is very important to have a long lifetime and a reliable operation with, of the cone crusher. The drive of the H4E cone crusher is performed by an electric motor 132 kilowatt via V-belt directly to the shaft of the crusher. The lubrication of the bearings at the bottom and on top is performed by a pressurized lubrication system which is arranged in this position. It has a, an electric motor with a lub pump and it pumps in constantly oil and the outcoming oil brings out also the heat from the cone crusher and is cooled down. The hydro set system for lifting and lowering the shaft is arranged also here. It has an electric motor, 3 kilowatt, and a hydraulic pump for preventing uh, metal, tramp metal going into the cone crusher. We have a metal detector arranged underneath the belt feeder. The metal detector is adjustable uh, in sensitivity from 1 to 10 in steps and avoids that tramp iron can go into the cone crusher. In cold climate condition, it is necessary to preheat the lubrication oil of the cone crusher to have less downtime and to start the operation immediately in the morning. For this preheating, we have a special system. It's a heating system with separate fuel tank and we have a timer uh, through the control of the plant. It can be uh, controlled and the time can be set when the preheating of the oil should start in the morning and how long it should take. The whole set of the cone crusher, including the drive, is supported on rubber buffers to avoid that vibrations can go from the cone crusher to the frame. The crushed material is transported by a belt conveyor from the crusher up here to the built-on after screen. This conveyor has a length of 10.5 meter and a width of 1000 millimeter and is driven by an electric gear motor 11 kilowatt. From here the material goes to the three deck screen. The three deck screen has a width of uh, 1.5 meter and the length of each deck of 3.6 meter. So we have total on each deck 5.4 square meters. The oversized fraction is going up to the left side of the crusher by a belt conveyor 2.8 meter by uh, 5 meter. And then on the left side of the crusher going back to the feed hopper by a belt conveyor 8.5 meter long and 650 millimeter wide with an electric drive drum of 5.5 kilowatt. The middle course fraction goes to the left side of the crusher via a belt conveyor, it is stockpiled. The belt conveyor has a length of 6 meter and a width of uh, 500 millimeter. So the stockpile capacity is uh, 90 ton. The middle fraction fine is going to the right side with a belt conveyor also 6 meter long, 500 millimeter wide and a stockpile capacity of 90 tons. The fine fraction under the screen is going through this belt conveyor to stockpile. The belt conveyor has a width of 1.2 meter and a length of 6.8 meter and has a stockpile capacity of 165 tons. All belt conveyors are driven with electric gear motors 5.5 kilowatt. 
all side conveyors of the after screening unit are hydraulically foldable for transport. And the oversized return conveyor, which has guiding chutes over the total length, can be transported also on the machine. The H4E is powered by a built-on engine unit, uh, which can be dropped off. So the whole unit you can remove from the machine, stand it beside and make cable connection to the machine to come out of dusty areas and to reduce the service costs to filters. Furthermore, power, through these power locks, uh, power can be supplied from the grid to the machine. It means it is not necessary to run the machine with diesel engine, it can also be run fully electric from the grid. If service has to be done to the engine unit, it's possible to rent a genset and to supply the energy from the genset to the H4E. The built-on genset consists of a Volvo Penta diesel engine TAD1351 EU stage 3 with a power of 313 kilowatt and the diesel engine drives an alternator with 330 kVA. The alternator has its own uh, aeration system, air is filtered and the filtered air is cooling the alternator. For EU Stage 5, a Cummins engine L9 can be built in. The whole control of the H4E is done by PLC and the PLC is built into a switch cabinet. The switch cabinet is overpressured, it means fresh air is filtered first and the fan is blowing always air into the switch cabinet to avoid that dust can enter to the switch cabinet. So here the fresh air is blown in and keeps the switch cabinet clean. On the outside door we have the screen, a 12-inch display from which the whole control, the whole machine is controlled. All switch cabinets on the H4E or tanks are supported on damping rubber blocks to avoid vibrations to electronic components. Or the H4E can make a plug out of energy, electric energy, from here to a, either to a stacker or to an after screen or to other equipment. We have here 125 amps, which means we can have roughly 60 kilowatt plug out to other machines. The control of the tracks either can be done via a cable remote control, via a radio remote control. With this control, we also can set the speed of the belt feeder and we can make automatic start. What we also have on the H4E is a case tracker system, so all the data from the control can be transferred to anywhere in the world, which means operational data, production data, service data can be transferred to PCs or to phones, mobile phones, to everywhere in the world. Here we see a quick release a system for the drop-off engine unit. So when we open this, we can drop off the engine unit. For tracking of the machine and for all other hydraulic operations, on the H4E there are two electric motors, each 30 kilowatt, with each one axial piston pump to supply hydraulic oil to, uh, to all uh, consumers. The axial piston pumps are extremely energy saving and they are only 
needing, requiring energy when the energy really is required. For safety reasons, on the machine there are seven emergency stop switches implemented and one machine stop, the blue machine stop on the radio remote control. Furthermore, we have safe SS walkway around the machine and the machine has a lot of indicators, example for rotation of the cone crusher, uh, rotation of belt conveyors to give maximum safetyness for operation. For transport of the H4E, the transport dimensions are 19 meter long, 3.47 meter in height and 2.7 meter in width. So the transport weight of the H4E is 49 tons.